Hi everyone, this is Miss Moriarty and I'm here to discuss with us our topic 6.6, .6, which is all about nuclear power. Looking at our first slide, um, how do we wind up generating electricity using nuclear power? Well, our fuel source in this case is known as uranium-235. This is a radioactive type substance. It is non-renewable because it takes millions of years for that uranium fuel uh, to form. Now, the radioactivity um, of our uranium-235 actually refers to the energy that is given off by the nucleus of our U-235. So when we go to perform a fission reaction, which is the most common way in which we produce electricity through nuclear power, we actually uh, strike the nucleus with a neutron. What that winds up doing is it splits it into two or more parts, releasing any additional neutrons and energy in the form of heat. And as you can see in the image on the left, this kind of creates a chain reaction once we go about doing that. And this chain reaction releases tremendous amounts of heat energy that we can then harness to generate electricity. Now, another concept associated with nuclear power that we need to be familiar with is what's known as half life or radioactive half-life. So this is going to be the amount of time it takes for about 50% of that radioactive substance to decay or break down. So you can kind of see that displayed in this graph here, right? The number of half-lives, right, looking at one half-life leaves us with about 50% of that substance remaining versus when we go to the then second half life we only have about half of that 50 so that would be 25 percent and we continue to see that breakdown over time so here in our notes i put a little practice problem for us to try and solve so here in practice problem one, it says you have 180 grams of a radioactive substance. It has a half-life of 265 years. After 1,325 years, what mass would still remain? So remember, you are using half-life concepts here. So I would take a moment and pause the video and see if you can solve it yourself. Now, if we solved this problem to check our answers, here's a couple of the steps that we should have went through to solve. So here we've got 1,325 years, right? That would be the total number of years that we had. We know that it has um, a half-life of about 265 years. So if we take that number and divide it by 265, that would give us a total of five half-lives. So that's how much this substance has wound up decaying. Now we know we started with 180 grams of that radioactive substance. So if it goes through five half-lives, that means I have to half that number five times. So after that total number of years there, that means I'd have only about 5.625 grams left of that radioactive substance. Okay, now looking at how do we go about using our uranium-235 to generate electricity. So some terms we need to be familiar with before we get to the process will be what's known as the fuel rod, control rod, and water pumps. So the fuel rod is going to be a cylindrical tool usually found within the reactor core. This is going to enclose the actual nuclear fuel or uranium-235. Control rods are going to be usually inserted between the fuel rods within the nuclear core and this is what's going to absorb any excess neutrons and potentially slow down or stop the fission reaction when it releases too much energy because when it releases too much energy and we can no longer control the amount of heat that's being produced that is when we can get a nuclear meltdown so in nuclear power having a water pump is really key here so looking at the electricity generation process, it's really similar to how we go about generating electricity with really all of our fuel types, especially coal. So here in this case, we know that we, using nuclear uh, fission, right, we bombard the nuclei of our uranium-235 with neutrons, causing it to split. This releases tremendous amounts of heat, which then heats up uh, water, turning into steam. Steam turns a turbine. That turbine powers a generator, and in this case, we produce electricity. So here is it outlined in the picture along with our notes. So here would be our reactor um, 
our reactor core here or containment structure. Here's our control rods. Usually this is where we would find our fuel rods as well. Here is where the uranium-235 will be. Remember when we bombard it, it splits, produces high, high amounts of energy. That's what's going to then create steam here. That steam line is going to turn a then turbine. That turbine and generator then produces our electricity. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of nu using nuclear power? Well, in nuclear power, although we are using a non-renewable resource, it does not produce any air pollutants. So things like particulate matter, sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases, none of those are particularly generated in our process of uh, using uranium-235. The only gas that is produced, however, will be our water vapor, which a little bit later on when we get to uh, unit nine, we'll learn that water vapor is technically also a greenhouse gas, but it doesn't have as great of a global warming potential as other greenhouse gases like CO2 or methane. So drawbacks to our nuclear energy. What do we wind up doing now with the radioactive substance? So what do we do with these spent fuel rods? It can take millions and millions of dollars um, to store them since it can take hundreds, thousands of years for those substances to wind up becoming no longer uh, radioactive or decaying. Mine tailings, right, in order to obtain uranium-235, it does involve mining operations. We know um, tailings are overburdened, right, the leftover rock or toxic materials left over can contaminate water or soil. Using nuclear power creates, uh, excuse me, generates tremendous water use, so we could see a depletion of local water sources. Um, as well as thermal pollution. So any of the hot water that's produced um, from the nuclear power plant can be released back into any local surface waters. And this water is really, really hot. So this actually goes back to ecological tolerance. So here, uh, organisms may experience a physiological change and stress on their physiological systems when they go into thermal shock, since it's gonna decrease the amount of oxygen and potentially suffocate uh, the organisms in that local waterway. Now another lar now another large uh, disadvantage, unfortunately, to nuclear power, and a part of the reason why it tends to get a bad rep, is some of the nuclear meltdowns or disasters that has happened in the past uh, since its creation. The three that you definitely need to be familiar with for the AP exam is Three Mile Island, which actually took place in um, Pennsylvania in the US, um, Fukushima, Japan, as well as Chernobyl in Ukraine. Now, what happened at Three Mile Island um, wasn't necessarily a um, large disaster like our Fukushima or Chernobyl. However, it was the greatest nuclear disaster in U.S. history. Um, we saw a partial meltdown due to a testing error. There was some radiation that was released, but no deaths or residual cancer has been found. Versus in Fukushima, Japan, it was actually due to a earthquake and tsunami that triggered the cooling pump failure that led to the meltdown or explosion of the reactor core in the nuclear power plant, releasing radiation to tremendous areas around Fukushima, Japan. Looking at Chernobyl or Ukraine here, um, there was actually a stuck cooling valve during their testing, which then led to a complete mm -hmm. meltdown and once again, explosion of the reactor core. In Chernobyl, we saw several deaths, widespread radiation, um, and so on. Now, what happens when we have those nuclear disasters? What is the fallout of that? Some of environmental um, consequences could be genetic mutations of organisms nearby, maybe even um, cancer impacting the populations of people nearby, as well as animals and plants. Uh, here's our practice FRQ for 6.6. .6. They really like to show you guys uh, images of a nuclear power plant, so become very familiar uh, with these diagrams. So take a moment um, and complete the practice FRQ in your note packet somewhere, as well as in the Ed Puzzle. 
All right, taking a look at our answer. So our question was using the figure above, describe in detail our process of generating energy from our nuclear power. So we know that uranium-235 is going to be the fuel that we will use. We know it is split in a process known as fission. This process produces large amounts of heat. That heat is then used to boil water to make steam. That steam turns a turbine. That turbine winds up generating electricity. All right, everyone, that's it for our video on 6.6. .6. Please leave a question uh, at the end.